So we're in unit 18 and we're talking about um, the indirect interrogative and also indefinite relative word hostis. If you look at the nominative singular form there, hostis, you can see it's composed of two things, namely, really see, come on, namely hos and tis. Hos is the relative pronoun, hos that you all know, and tis is the indirect, in, in the, um, um, not indirect, but the um, just the direct interrogative? No, it, well, it's oh, the direct indefinite. interrogative when it has an act. Indefinite, that's it. The indefinite adjective, tis, mm -hmm. that's it. It means some or any, right? Mm -hmm. So the combination means whoever or whichever or whatever um, in English. And if you look at the forms, they're, they're interesting. It's the enclitic form of tis, the indefinite tis. Sorry, I forgot it plus added on to the forms of the relative pronouns. So has, who, ho, and han. Your know, accent kind of moved off to the left there for the accusative, Felicity. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, um, you just add the enclitic to them, and the accents just, just remain unchanged because the enclitic at the end doesn't change the, the meaning. It's one word, hostis, hut, and os, and so forth. Notice that in the genitive and the dative, for both singular and plural, you tend to have a, a collapsed form. That is, what's left of the who is just ha. So ha to, and then you inflect it as though it was a, a second declension noun. Ha to and ha to, these are newer forms, and in fact much more common than hu tenas and ho tini, but you do see them. Um, ha ton and ha tois in the plural are rarer, but ha to and ha to are pretty common in Greek. So, um, and then the feminine forms uh, and the neuter forms, so you, I think you can determine, you can see it's hetis, hastinos. You inflect both the relative and the indefinite adjective. That's the tricky part, okay? Um, okay, uh, so these are indefinite relative and indirect interrogative. And the idea there is that whoever, you can say, um, uh, you can use whoever in sentences like that are like conditional sentences. Whoever doesn't uh, uh, like cold water won't swim in the northeast. Okay, so that's like a conditional sentence. If anyone doesn't like cold water, they don't swim in the northeast. And um, so you can have regular conditional sentences, and that's a relative clause. Whoever doesn't like cold water, um, but you can also use them as an indirect interrogative. In other words, when you are quoting uh, a question, he asked me, "Whoever doesn't like." cold water. Okay, that's an indirect interrogative. A direct interrogative is, who doesn't like cold water? Question mark. Not embedded in another sentence, right? So use indirect interrogatives for embedded questions, but in Greek, guess what? You don't have to. Most of the time, they don't. Okay? So you're going to see hostis much more commonly as a, as a relative, an indefinite relative, whoever, than as an indirect interrogative. Um, so there, up on the up on the Belize's blackboard, is the direct interrogative tis te who or what, and then whoever or whatever is what hostis mostly means. Hostis hates is hot it, but in the as an indirect interrogative, it means who in in, in the world with a question mark after it. Uh, what in the world? Okay. So um, and then we. The next thing the book shows you is a sequence of uh, words of inter interrogatives and the indirect forms that you have of them in Greek. Greek doesn't always use them, but they're there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a chart on page 525. 26. No, 26. We missed the chart on 525. There's a, there's a chart on 525 mm -hmm. of, 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 no, of, of, direct and indirect interrogatives like tis, te versus hostis, hetis, hate. So you also have poios, that means of what kind, and posos, about how much or how many. We had them in the previous lesson. Mm -hmm. But if you add ha in front of them, they become indirect interrogatives. Um, so there's a chart on page 525 of the indirect interrogatives and their direct forms. On page 526, there's a, a, another continuing chart of direct interrogatives and, and indirect interrogatives, as which can also be relatives, but also 
the indefinite adverbs or particles that are results of them. So if we look at pu, okay, mm -hmm. with it, when it has an accent, it's a question word, it's, it asks where. When it doesn't have an accent, it means somewhere, <laughs> okay? And when you have the ha in front of it, it means wherever, okay? Not wherever the expletive, um, <laughs> but wherever I, uh, I went, wherever you did, okay, that wherever that introduces a relative clause or an indirect interrogative. I asked where in the world, wherever did you go, okay? Mm -hmm. And the same is true of posts. Those are two examples. There are three or four more on page 526. Posts, question mark, how? Posts without an accent somehow. Uh, how posts, however, not the adverb, however, but I, I asked however he came, okay? Um, that, that however, all right. Um, so we're done. Yep.